The M1 MacBook Pro has given users who have got the Intel MacBook Pro 16 inch a little bit of envy because for half the money, it performs very similar, if not better, in almost every task to that model. So Mac users are wondering what's next for that 16 inch MacBook Pro. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Moon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. But today I'm gonna to break down what to expect from the 2021 16 inch MacBook Pro. First, let's start with design. In 2019, it was revamped from the 15.4 inch screen to the 16 inch screen that we currently see within the same body. Well, it was almost the same body. It got a little bit bigger and a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier, but it was definitely worth it because of that beautiful screen and thinner bezels. I don't think we'll probably see another redesign from this model in 2021. Maybe in 2022 or a little bit later down the road. I just don't think that they would switch to a 16 inch model and then a year later or two years later then switch the whole design overall. The issue that we've had with MacBook Pros in general is the performance to price ratio. Most people who need let's say a powerful CPU and powerful GPU would often spend upwards of £4,000. This is for example for a 9th gen Intel i9, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 2 terabytes of storage and an AMD Radeon 5600M with 8 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. This spec is very powerful, don't get me wrong, but this costs four and a half thousand pounds. Like, seriously. And this is where Apple Silicon has really changed things because for applications like machine learning, we're seeing that the base MacBook Air is completing tasks faster than this specced out 16 inch MacBook Pro. And for other tasks like H.265 video editing or photo editing, for example, it performs on a similar level, but for a third of the price. All over YouTube, people have actually been ditching their iMacs and 16 inch MacBook Pros for a 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro with potentially 16 gigabytes of RAM because it's performing well enough for almost any of their tasks. Even for myself, the M1 MacBook Air base model exports my videos faster and quieter than my 1,800 pound MacBook Pro with a 10th generation Intel processor. Like seriously. And looking at how the performance is going so far with Apple Silicon, I think that we could potentially see a base 16 inch MacBook Pro with Apple Silicon be the same, if not more powerful than that fully top end spec MacBook Pro 16 inch, which would really be a game changer as it will give Mac users the ability to create more powerful apps, develop more complex machine learning models, and for photo and video editors, more creative free Freedom. According to Mark Gurman, who is a very reliable Apple leaker, says that we are, might be expecting a 16 core CPU with a 16 core GPU in this MacBook Pro, which would literally be amazing to see. Now, there are some rumors out there that Apple might be putting an Intel CPU, but I really can't imagine Apple putting an Intel CPU in the MacBook Pro 16 inch in 2021, as it just wouldn't be exciting enough, as the performance increase from that 9th gen to, let's say, 10th or 11th gen just wouldn't be enough for those who have been waiting for an update since 2019. Also, I don't think we'll be seeing a dedicated GPU from Apple or anyone else in the 16 inch MacBook Pro. As Apple has said many times that don't think discrete GPU means better and faster than an integrated GPU. And from what we've seen from M1 so far, I'm starting to believe that integrated GPUs in the CPU might be the way forward. With regards to RAM, I think that we'll see up to 64 gigabytes of unified memory, which would pair really well with the beefier graphics and CPU that we'll see in this 16 inch MacBook Pro. The screen will also get an upgrade, not in terms of screen size, but in terms of technology. We'll, I think, start to see mini LED technology. Right now on all MacBooks and iMacs, we have an LCD panel, which is made up of a large backlight and then a layer of color pixels, which that backlight shines through. The next major jump from this is OLED technology, which is great because it means that every pixel is, has its own LED, which means that it can produce its own light, negating the fact that we need a backlight, making panels much thinner. This means that you get much deeper blacks in one area and much brighter whites in another, as those black pixels can just turn off and then the white pixels can output more light. LCD panels with a single backlight can't do that. So that means that the blacks never look truly black and the whites never look truly white. 
and you can try this out on your iPhone that has an OLED display and a MacBook. Find a true black image and then put them on both screens and you'll see that the iPhone will look completely black because essentially the pixels have turned off and then the MacBook will have that sort of grey hue to it and that's because that backlight is still shining through it. The downside to OLED though is that it's expensive to make and it has its own issues like burning for example is a major one. So for those who don't know Apple actually acquired a micro LED company called LuxView and even filed a patent covering a foldable iPhone sporting a micro LED display. A micro LED is slightly different to mini LED that we'll see in these MacBook Pros but Apple's focus for the future will be micro LED because instead of uh, a backlight being made up of hundreds of LEDs which is what we'll see with mini LED a micro LED will actually have basically thousands of LEDs as a backlight. We've already seen mini LED technology from Apple. That Pro XDR display has 576 LEDs as a backlight instead of that one large backlight that we've currently seen before on LCD panels. Now this actually wasn't classed as mini LED technology because the size of the display was really large but if we had that same number of LED backlights in let's say that 16 inch model then it would be classed as a mini LED display. So what Apple wants to do with mini LED is bridge the gap between uh, OLED and LCD and they're going to do this by basically splitting the backlight panel into hundreds of sections which means that we'll see much better black and much brighter white, meaning that we'll see much better overall contrast. So for us as consumers, we're going to get a much better product and Apple can still keep their margins. The touch bar has been a love it or hate it feature. Now with the new reports coming from Mark Gurman and Min Chin Kuo, potentially we might see them replace the touch bar with function key rows. The current 16 inch MacBook Pro doesn't support Wi-Fi 6, but I will expect to see this in the new 2021 model model because we already see this with the M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro models. The webcam will hopefully receive an update too seeing as this is the biggest and best MacBook Pro that Apple has to offer and they just have to put a webcam to match that. I also think that we'll see the same four ports that we currently see but instead of them being sort of Thunderbolt 3 they're obviously going to be that new standard of uh, USB 4 with obviously Thunderbolt compatibility as well as a headphone jack. Now both Min Chin Kuo and Mark Gurman have have announced that there might be the return of MagSafe which will be amazing to see and this will go alongside the other USB-C ports. Now there isn't too much more information regarding this how it's going to be implemented but a lot of users will be rejoicing over this. There are also rumors regarding the return of old ports so potentially this could be an SD card slot as this has been something that a lot of users have been complaining about just because they are sick of carrying the dongle and a lot of video and photography photographers use SD cards a lot so having one built in just makes sense especially in a creativity machine like this. Looking at the possible dates for the launch of the Apple Silicon 16 inch I believe that we'll see this in September time. Obviously due to the current world situation we know that Apple have been struggling with the production of mini LED so I think that they may start with the 14 inch model first and then move to the 16 inch model after a few months. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion, so please leave a comment down below on what you think that we'll see in the new 16 inch model, and also check out the links in the description to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarmoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it, and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. But if you want to see more from me right now, you guys know what to do. I'm going to provide two videos. Pick your favorite one or flip a coin. Heads is uh, the first one, tails is the bottom one. Click on them, you'll love them. Anyway, everyone, We'll see you in the next video. Bye.